Steve from the IMDT. How are you doing? That was weird. Um, okay, so we've just finished uh, an IMDT seminar. Uh, everyone's gone home for the day. Just me left in the classroom, talking to an empty classroom, and a camera, and you. Hopefully someone's watching. Um, and we've looked at loads of stuff today. It's been a really, really good day. And we've looked at really elegant, quite heavy, quite deep ways that we can help dogs that are struggling. Um, dogs that are maybe offering unwanted behaviours, um, owners therefore that are struggling. And we've looked at really elegant solutions and it's been fantastic. We've looked at how, um, how meds can support certain rehabilitation programmes. Uh, we've looked at remedial massage, we've looked at things like T-tops, we've looked at loads and loads of stuff. Um, and really clever stuff, and really clever stuff that works. Uh, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes, only because it was a conversation that we had after, after outside the classroom today. And I just want to make sure that trainers don't lose sight of, of the spine of how we can change behaviour. Um, three main spines really of how we can help dogs that are feeling the need to offer inappropriate behaviour to get themselves out of situations or, or to achieve certain goals. Um, and there's trainers how we can help owners understand how to, how to stay consistent with uh, behaviour modification programmes and just basic training. So the three things, three spines I want to talk about and I just want to talk about it just for a couple of minutes, are control and management, consequences, and associations. Now, if a dog is offering a behaviour that we don't want, uh, it may be a dog that feels the need to bark at other dogs, it may be a puppy that weeds on the carpet, it may be a dog that jumps up at visitors, whatever. First and foremost, I want to make sure that we've got our control and management nice and secure. I want to make sure that we've got control and management right on point. Control and management means that we're going to organise the environment, organise situations, so the dog can't practice the unwanted behaviour. That unwanted behaviour is happening because somehow it's being reinforced. Maybe inadvertently, but it's definitely being reinforced. Control and management is just going to stop that happening instantly. So let's say we've got uh, a visitor comes to the house and the owner says, my dog jumps up on the visitor. I don't want my dog jumping up on visitors. It scares them, he's big, he's dirty, whatever, <laughs> whatever. You know, a lot of people aren't dog freaks like us, a lot of dog trainers, people that are gonna spend all day in a classroom learning more and more about dog, dog training. Um, so we've got the situation where the owner doesn't want the dog to jump up on visitors. Control and management, purely says, okay, well, when the doorbell goes, pop your dog in the garden, let your visitor in. Um, doorbell goes, put your dog in the kitchen, close the door. That's good control and management. And I'm going to say, oh, simple really, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. But simple's not always easy because it takes a little bit of discipline. It takes another 10 seconds before you open the door. Um, and, you, and we need to be consistent. Uh, and, Another controller management, oh my dog runs off down the park all the time, it takes me an hour to get him back. Well cool, pop your dog on a long line when you go down the park. Um, my dog eats stones and he keeps having to go to the vet, could be an example. Well teach your dog, you know, have a muzzle on your dog when he's off the lead, so he can't eat the stones. You know, you, we can do all the elegant training, we can do everything else, that's going to sit in behind, but that takes a while for a bit of traction. That takes a while to, to take hold. Controller management, instant. So stick your control and management in place, whatever the problem, put your control and management in place. Then we have consequences. Consequences is about the trainer, the owner, delivering consequences to behaviour. Behaviour that any animal does that has a nice positive reinforcement, a nice pleasant consequence to doing that behaviour, that behaviour is more likely to reoccur. That's basic dog training. When we're looking at a scenario where we've got unwanted behaviour occurring, then we've got to ask ourselves, well, what do we want instead? What's a, what would be a good mutually exclusive behaviour? Mutually exclusive behaviour just means a behaviour that the dog's going to do, and while he's doing that behaviour, he can't do the unwanted behaviour at the same time. That's all mutually exclusive behaviour means. 
So if we have a dog that jumps up at visitors to say hello, we teach the dog, when visitors come, when you put your bum on the floor, that's when people say hello. Maybe that's when a hot dog and the cheese comes out of the pocket. Sit would be a good mutually exclusive behaviour for a dog that jumps up. Maybe for a dog that barks at other dogs, mutually exclusive behaviour would be get that dog to look at you. So if I've got a dog that isn't comfortable with dogs approaching, maybe I'm going to teach this guy the way to put space between you and that scary dog isn't to bark, the way to get space between you and scary dog is to look at me. Now as a trainer, as an owner, I need to appreciate when a dog looks at me, I say, cool, let's go, man. Now I'm not going to deliberately put a dog under pressure to teach him to do that, but I'm going to heavily reinforce eye contact in other scenarios so the dog knows, if in doubt, check in with the monkey. He's going to get me out of dodge. So if there's something in it for you, look up at the monkey. Get that. If you want to be let off the lead, look up at the monkey. You'll get that. If you want to get out of trouble, or you're not comfortable in a situation, look up. We'll get out of trouble. My, my little dog, Nancy, my little chihuahua type, um, she's learned that if she stands on my foot, then I pick her up. Non-negotiable. I'm definitely picking her up. So we've got a deal. If, if I'm still talking to someone, and I see a dog before her, and I think she's not going to be comfortable, I ask her if I can pick her up. So I, I bend down, and I make... I do this with my hands, which is a bit weird, but she likes her tummy being rubbed. So I do this with my hands, and I say, Coral, because <laughs> it's like a fish rubbing his belly on Coral. Shut up. I say, Coral, Nancy steps in, and up we go. That's me asking Nancy, so we can get out of trouble. If she sees, if I'm nattering to someone, and she sees a dog before me, she knows, if she puts her two feet on my foot, because I can feel that, if she puts her two feet on my foot, I'll pick her up, and we'll get out of there. Okay? Um, consequences to behaviour. Nice mutually exclusive behaviour. Then we have our associations, our classical conditioning, our, our relationships to the environment. So looking at Nancy, if she's not comfortable with dogs, then my job is to teach her to be comfortable, to feel happy. I need to make sure my control and management is in place, but I can just hang in an environment. When a dog goes at a safe distance, as soon as he clocks that dog, I can feed Nancy. To the point where, with enough repetition, she sees another dog, she goes, oh, good news. Originally, when she saw another dog, she predicted bad stuff, and that shortened her fuse. And that made her less tolerant, that made her quicker to react, quicker to kick off. But now, when she sees another dog, she knows, buffet's open, her fuse is, her tolerance is longer. She, she can cope much better, she can be in that environment, Plus, she can cope much better in that environment because she knows if she feels unsafe, she only has to put her feet on my feet and we're out of trouble. A dog, a human, is going to be much happier going into a, a, a new environment if they know that they can walk out of that environment if it all kicks off. If you walk into a room and it's a bit weird and then you hear the door close behind you, you're not comfortable being in that environment. You're going to back away. If you walk into a room and it's all open, it's like a marquee. There's no doors, you can just walk out of that marquee whenever you want. It's all open-sided. Then you're going to be more comfortable being in there because you know you can get out of dodge if and when. So changing associations. Our Pavlov stuff, Skinner stuff, and good old control and management. Good old, it's oh, simple really, isn't it? So let's say um, we've got a puppy that weeds on the carpet. Control and management means let's not have the dog on the carpet when we can't be with the puppy. So we're going to make sure that the dog's with us or feeling good about being in their crate or in a utility room or somewhere not on the carpet. So the dog can't do the unwanted behaviour. Consequences are going to be, let's give the pup every opportunity to wee on the grass, wee in the garden. And when puppy does, we're going to reinforce her like it's the best thing in the world. You're a genius, you've weed on grass. So puppy on the grass. After feeding, after waking, after play, after a visitor, on the grass, wait. When puppy finishes going to the wee, yeah, that's when all the good stuff happens. Pups, I'm a genius. <laughs> but make sure you reinforce after the weeing, not halfway through. Otherwise, puppy do a wee, ah, get some good stuff, <laughs> run indoors, and then finish off their wee. So make sure puppy's empty, heavily reinforced afterwards. In a nutshell, they're the three things. The association to the environment, for me, is 
underplayed. Uh, people don't make a, enough deal of it. They don't focus on it enough. How the dog feels in an environment, to me, is more important to how, that, how the dog behaves. Behaviour is easy. Easy, easy, easy to reinforce behaviours that you want. If the dog feels happy. If the dog feels comfortable. If the dog feels safe. That's, that's first and foremost, that's the most important thing. That we owe our dogs. They feel safe. If we're putting them in a situation where they don't feel safe, then, then shame on us. We need to take a step back and we need to look at the bigger picture. Safety first, every animal deserves that. Every animal deserves that. Okay, that's our three main stages: Control and management, consequences, association to behaviour. If you have any questions, lots of people are asking me for videos, which is cool, um, but I don't want to do videos that people don't want to watch. So if there's anything, <laughs> obviously, um, if there's anything particular that you'd like a video on, please message me uh, on Facebook um, or drop me an email via the INDT website, which is info at indt.uk.com. Uh, any questions, uh, any uh, requests for any particular videos, uh, I will try and oblige. Okay, over and out.